What is up guys? I'm Kyle at Fortune Off-Road and today we're talking about towing your trail rig. So because I haven't saved up enough money to get a flatbed trailer yet, what we're going to be doing is flat towing. Now flat towing is definitely not the ideal way to tow, but if you don't want to invest a lot of money into it, it could be a great option. So the number one thing to consider when you're towing is your tow rig itself. Now I've got this mid-sized Colorado here. It's nothing fancy. It does pull about 7,000 pounds and the Samurai's stock are only about 2,100 pounds. So it's not a heavy vehicle to tow, but first you definitely want to make sure that your tow rig is going to be up to the task of towing this vehicle. A lot of the towing I do is up to the Sierras and there's a bunch of steep grades up there. There's 5%, sometimes 7% and it can be really hard on your tow rig if it's not working properly. If you're going up 7% and your cooling system just isn't working right or your transmission is slipping or something like that, that is definitely not going to work for you. So you need to make sure that your rig's ready to go. Another thing is going down those grades on the way back for me. Super steep. You need your brakes to be working in case of an emergency, right? But another thing that people don't think about sometimes is tow haul. Tow haul is a great thing to have on your vehicle because it helps your engine and your transmission slow you down so you're not depending on your brakes the whole time so your brakes aren't heating up. And that tow haul helps going uphill too, so huge plus if you have that. Probably the most important part after that is the tow bar itself. I have a Smitty Belt tow bar that I'm going to throw on here in a minute. I'll show you how I set that up and we're going to talk about everything that has to do with that tow bar and what I would watch out for and what I would consider getting when you're hooking it up to your tow rig. So I chose to go with the tow bar that detaches from your rig because I just don't want to be wheeling around with that. Just one more thing going on that I didn't want to deal with and eventually, like I mentioned, we will hopefully have a trailer so I didn't want anything to be too permanent and all of this can unbolt. As you saw, one person can put this on fairly easily. You see I've got this piece of wood here, you're probably wondering what that's about. Well sometimes I have to do this by myself and when I do I just have that little piece of wood prop it up because it's just on some hinges right there. It's just slightly above the ball there. So that way I can get into my truck and back it up without a spotter. And luckily this truck does have a little backup camera that helps with aligning that with the ball. So one thing I like to do when I'm hooking up my safety chains up to the receiver hitch on the truck is I cross the chains. You can kind of see that when I hooked them up. And when you're flat towing, it's not such a huge deal, but if you are able to make a sharp turn, you'll want to do this because it helps you get a little bit more slack out of your chains and they're never gonna bind up. If you're towing a trailer, this can also be helpful because if the trailer comes off of the ball, hopefully these cross chains would create a little bit of a cradle for that trailer to rest in while you're still pulling it. That way it keeps it from dragging on the ground. Now, when you're hooking up the tow bar attachment onto your rig, you need to make sure that the attachment point is definitely strong enough. And we're not talking about just pulling it for any type of emergency that you may have to go into, going over bumps. You wanna make sure it rotates enough, all that stuff. I think they are half inch bolts, I'm not 100% sure, but they're pretty big, quarter inch, it's not going anywhere. But in the case that they do, you will wanna have some safety chains that wrap around somewhere on the frame or the suspension. Mine are going around my leaf springs just below the shackle on both sides. But one thing to note is this Smitty Built tow bar does not come with these safety chains. It only comes with the front one, so you'll have to pick that up yourself. When you're buying some parts to get your tow bar set up, you'll see you want your tow bar to be as flat as possible. This one isn't completely flat, but it's pretty close. And the way you achieve that is two ways. One, your mounting point on your trail rig, and then also 
with the ball hitch on your truck. You can see this one's flipped upside down. I put the ball on the top. That's one way you're gonna be able to get the height out of it. Another way is mounting it in a certain spot on your trail rig. So if you remember my front bumper update video, I talked about how I was gonna mount my tow bar on both sides of the fair lead here, but this Smitty Belt tow bar had some restrictions on how narrow that mounting can be and also how wide. So if I was gonna do it there, it was gonna be too narrow and I definitely didn't wanna risk it because when you're going 55 or whatever speed you're going with the trailer, you definitely do not want anything to go crazy while you're driving. The next thing to look at is going to be the braking, or in this case, the lighting for the vehicle that you're towing. There are definitely some smart ways to have this set up and people plug in their trailer wiring into the rig and you can use the stock lamps and everything. I decided to do it the easy way. We have some magnetic tow lights and these lights have an amber lens facing the front and a red lens. Here's my one on the other side. I like to have my wires just go through the vehicle like this and if your door's on i just make sure the door closes with a weather stripping on here not to mess up these wires i've got it routed through some light wiring goes down through some more wires got some clips from the hardware store that keep the wiring in line this all plugs into your standard four pin connection this is the part that most people want to know first off they don't care about any of this other stuff they want to know this and this really is what's going to create any problems for you with your transmission or your engine if you get it wrong good news super easy so you need to make sure that your transmission and your transfer case are in the correct positions if you have the stock samurai transfer case you're going to want that to be in neutral and your transmission in second gear. Now there's a little placard that comes with these or you can get them from different sources that tell you how to do this process. I would follow that. There's actually a little procedure to do it and it's super easy. That's how you keep everything out of trouble. Now, if you've got the same setup as me, I'm running the twisted kit from Trail Tough. So as you can see, I've got a few more options here on my transfer case basically it just splits the case in half two wheel drive in the front and four wheel drive at the back there when i talked to him they said yeah it's the same thing you just want to have this in two wheel drive neutral and the same thing you want your transmission to be in second gear now i do it a little differently i really just didn't want to have any problems so i did this the safest way i could think of and this is what's different with how i do it if you look back there you'll see that my rear drive line is disconnected and the rest of it is actually just held up right there with a little bungee cord the reason why i do that is because i don't really want anything spinning under there of course the rear tires are going to spin while you're towing it so that's going to spin your pinion there if your drive shaft was connected it would spin your transfer case and your transmission and so on so as long as you have everything in the right connection it shouldn't be a problem right well i just don't want to deal with it i don't want you know one of those things where i get done on the trail and i'm just a little bit too tired and i forget to do something so i just disconnect it now that part is not fun I don't like disconnecting it and then getting on the trail and putting it back on any of that stuff, but at least I know it's not gonna give me any issues. You also get a lot of people that say you have to disconnect your front drive shaft. Now, to me, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because if you do have the selectable hubs, just throw them in free, nothing's engaged. So even though your tires are spinning, it's not gonna spin your front drive shaft, so you don't have to worry about it spinning anything else. So I leave that one on. The last part of flat towing is the steering. Of course, since the steering axle is on the ground, it's gonna have to be able to steer. Keep in mind, you'll also have to have the key in the ignition and clicked over so the steering wheel can move freely. Otherwise, it's gonna be locked and you'll only go straight. For me, the only thing that comes on with that is anything that's powered off my accessories, which in this case is just my little switch panel. And I've had that run for hours and hours and I've never had any issue with it draining my battery or anything. If you guys want to see any of these parts that I'm using, go ahead and look in the description. I'll try to put a link to everything in there. That way you can see what's working for me and you can try it out for yourself. They are Amazon associate links, so any money that I earn from that goes right back into the channel, including the equipment I'm using right now. I just got a new mic. Hope it sounds good for you guys. So that's it guys, that's all that really goes into the flat towing. It's very simple, although it does take a little bit longer to get yourself going and unpacked when you get to the trail. So for that reason alone, I would rather 
use a trailer but there's also a bunch of other reasons and i'm sure you've heard most of them but this tow bar i think was about 125 bucks from amazon if you were to get a trailer we're talking thousands of dollars now plus you have axles and brakes to maintain besides the ones on your vehicle so it's just a little bit more work some people prefer to flat tow i think i would rather have a trailer but for now i'm using this and it works great if there's anything i forgot or something you think you should add put it down in the comments let everybody know help keep everybody out of trouble if you guys have any questions for me feel free to shoot them over i'm at fortune off-road on instagram you can throw them in the comments here or you can email us at fortuneanddeath at gmail.com thanks for watching guys see you next time